What's up guys, we are back with another Marvel Legends review and we're taking a look at an entire wave of figures today because, well, they've been out for a little bit, sort of, here and there, and I've just finally gotten my hands on them, so I figured I'd just knock them all out at once. So, we are taking a look today at the Venom Wave. We've got an entire case to take a look at. So there are, what, six different figures here uh, to take a look at. We've got five comic figures and one movie figure. It's kind of a weird wave because the movie figure doesn't have the same packaging, nor does he include a Build-A-Figure piece. So, speaking of, we've got Venom here to start with, and then we've got Phage, we've got Carnage, this absolute Carnage figure, and then we've got the 90s style Morbius, and we've got, who is this? We've got Ghost Spider, Gwenum, and then lastly, we've got the uh, Miles Morales, the kind of venomized Miles Morales. So these guys, of course, come in the standard looking packaging for Marvel Legends, but they're different. So all of the comic figures have the white style box with the Maximum Spider logo, uh, or Maximum Venom logo down there, rather, with artwork on the side, and then that kind of uh, cobweb, spiderweb motif. And then the Venom figure comes in a black box that is separate from the rest. He doesn't have cross-sell on the back, and of course, he doesn't have a Build-A-Figure piece, because he's very much kind of part of this wave, but sort of separate at the same time. So kind of an interesting mix, but we're going to do them all. We're going to take a look at all six figures. So let's pull them out and take a look. Now, since it is the Venom wave, we're going to start with the big man himself. And I'd say that makes the most sense because, well, I mean, this is really the flagship figure from this wave. He is a movie figure for a movie I don't think most folks expected to get toys from. And then, of course, he is uh, just very different. There's a lot of, of interesting stuff going on here when it comes to this figure from a construction standpoint and then just overall size because this is a big figure. Uh, I think a lot a lot larger than I expected him to be before, before we saw any kind of scale comparison. So uh, let's see what this guy can do. He is different but very similar if we're talking kind of more modern Marble Legends. So you've got a head that doesn't really look up. It's kind of jutting forward, so he basically just sort of looks straight ahead. He does look down really good, though. You do have really nice tilt side to side to give him a little attitude and then full rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. They have a ratchet in the joint there. He does not have a butterfly joint. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got our double jointed elbows with great range there. They are they are not pinless. So there's, this is not a pinless figure. We've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. For the chest and the abs area, he has a really solid diaphragm cut, so he goes backwards, forwards, side to side, full rotation, in conjunction with an ab crunch, so like a uh, like a Power Rangers Lightning Collection figure. So he goes forward really, really, really far, and then he goes backwards really far as well. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward all the way. They kick backwards a pretty good bit. You do have your thigh cut. We've got double-jointed knees that go all the way back, and then you've got... Uh, rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles great range nothing in the way no boot cut on this guy though because of course he does not have boots so they didn't even give him a shin swivel either but he does move really really well i mean this guy is just primed to be put in some really fantastic dynamic poses with really uh no muss no fuss he is just ready to go and has a great range of motion all the way around now, when it comes to the aesthetics here, this guy is, again, very unique. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure that this is 100% unique sculpt on this figure in general. And I'm really curious what is going to happen with this body. There's no way that he's not going to be reused, but I'm curious what we're going to see uh, with this one because the construction is really nice, the body is really well done, and it kind of plays up a big monstrous idea for, for what a figure can be because he's not just like a smooth figure. I'm sure you can see it kind of glistening in the light. There is a lot of kind of veiny, sinewy texture all over the body, and he He's just, I mean, he's just massive. So he's hes very hulking. Uh, he has a great shelf presence. And for the most part, he is just black. It's this black cast plastic uh, with a bit of a sheen to it. And it kind of plays up the idea that the symbiote does sort of glisten in the lights. You've got all of this sculpt work, tons of great musculature all over the figure. I mean, the sculpt is fantastic to begin with. The only thing I truly don't really like are these weird feet. And I'm not, I never saw this movie, so I have no idea uh, what's going on here. They look fine in, in the context of a figure, but I, I do think they kind of look weird at the same time. Uh, I do really like these monstrous gripping hands. They look really fantastic. Uh, they give him a, a little bit more of, a, of an evil look and vibe. And then he does have some paint on him, of course. It's kind of given you the idea of just the symbiote texture with this little white splotches and line work here and there. They do have that kind of fuzziness that we see with Marvel Legends from time to time, but overall uh, it's not too bad, and they do wrap around from the front to the back. But it's, it's all about just the overall sculpt on this guy. It's, it's, it's very much 
a Venom looking figure. Like I would love to have a comic book Venom on this body. I think it would be perfect because he's he's larger, he's hulking, he has a lot of size to him. It's not just height, it's girth and it's, it's overall depth of the figure. There's a lot of plastic here. So I think they did a really solid job uh, with the construction and then leaning that into the sculpt because it's a fantastic looking figure that very much works on its own as kind of like a thing apart from this wave. And then you've got this head sculpt up top here, which the one out of the box has him with the tongue kind of, you know, snaking its way out of his mouth. You've got those wicked, nasty teeth in there. And he still very much looks like Venom. This is a really, uh, really comic-inspired Venom look, obviously. And it works as works well as a movie figure also. So I'm really happy with the way this looks. Those eyes look fantastic. They're very stark white in comparison to the black. The teeth are really disgusting and gross. And just that open mouth with the tongue. I think it's great. It's a very Venom Venom look. So movie figure or not, this very much works for me on even a comic book level. I think they really knocked it out of the park in construction, in the overall look and feel. It's just a really fun figure. And then for accessories, Venom does have a few. So we've got some replacement hands for him instead of those monstrous kind of clawed hands. You've got a set of fists here. And then we do have an extra head sculpt, which honestly, this looks even more evil to me than the one with the tongue coming out of it. Something about this head sculpt uh, just looks devious and uh, menacing. But it is just a, a big, smiling, evil grin head sculpt for Venom. And I really, really like it. So you've got two fantastic portraits to choose from when it comes to this figure, depending on what you want to do with them but I think that we've got a lot of solid accessories here. Even though it's just fists and a head, it changes up the entire look of this figure and what you want to do with him. Next up, we've got Venomized Miles. And I'll be honest, Miles Morales is not a character that I have like a great fondness for. It's not one that I was heavily or have ever really been heavily invested in. So this one wasn't really on my radar when it came to this entire wave. But I gotta say, it's a lot more fun than I expected it was gonna be, especially because of all the new stuff going on here. So of course, this is kind of like the teen body uh, when it comes to Marvel Legends, but there are a lot of new parts. The head, the arms, the feet, stuff like that. So he very much looks, you know, kind of monstrous, and I really dig this head sculpt. He is very uh, familiar territory when it comes to articulation, though. Uh, so you've got a head that can look up really, really far, look down really far, a uh, little bit of tilt, full rotation, of course. You've got arms that go out at the shoulders. They rotate all the way around, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and then you've got your hinges and rotation at the wrist. For abs, he's got a crunch, backwards, forwards, and then you've got rotation at the waist. Legs go out, decent bit, not too far though. They kick forward all the way, backwards a good bit. You've got your thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then you've got these feet, uh, which have also a boot cut, but then they've got this crazy, crazy pivot on them. So the, the ankle is actually uh, pinned right at the top of the foot, so the, the foot goes all the way back, and then at times it's actually kind of difficult to get it to move. The detents are kind of weird, but it goes all the way up too, and the rocker on it is uh, is really good. Full full range of motion there. So he does have uh, he does have some pretty good posability options. I mean, again, I've had a lot of fun with this guy, and he's a lot better than I expected him to be. He moves really fluidly, uh, no real issues to speak of, except for one that I think has been an issue for a while on this body, and you might see it now. He is just really loose at the chest. So he, he does kind of wobble a bit. It doesn't present any real issues. Once you pose him, he's not going to do anything. But at the same time, when you're moving him around, he's probably going to wiggle with you. Visually, though, this figure is pretty awesome, and that might be where a lot of my enjoyment comes from. There's nothing too new or crazy when it comes to how he moves, but I like the way this guy looks. I really like all of these new parts with the venomized texture all of them, so you've got like the symbiote crawling up his arms. He's got these big, monstrous hands, which I think look really great in comparison to his, uh, well, his relatively small body. The spider emblem on his chest is well painted, but I do have a bit of an issue because of the fact that it's two different colors. So like the, uh, the bottom portion here is a deeper red than the top and the legs because of just how it's uh, painted. So it looks, it's one of those instances where it's kind of thin up top and I kind of think they maybe needed a little, little more paint or another coat. Uh, the feet look really cool. I mean, again, they're kind of oversized, so they have that kind of monstrous appeal to them. And the, the reds on the hands and the arms do look really good. They match the reds down here. So this is kind of the odd piece out. You've also got the spider logo on the back, which is also painted really, really clean and crisp. And it's just a nice little figure. That's what it, that's really what it comes down to. Like I said, I wasn't really expecting to, to care too much about this figure, but it looks cool. It's it's a little monstrous Miles Morales, and that, that for some reason really does it for me. This head sculpt is definitely a part of that, though. 
So you've got all the symbiote texture that's wrapping around the head. So another unique piece in terms of having all that sculpt on there, just like these arms, you know, these all are sculpted. It's not just painted on there. And you've got that kind of nasty open mouth with all those teeth, the big white eyes in uh, kind of contrast to the dark kind of charcoal looking suit that he has. So it's a really cool looking figure. My only real gripe in terms of how he looks is that spider, the kind of two-tone nature of that spider. I know that's not supposed to be different colors, but it's okay. Uh, otherwise, I think he looks pretty awesome. And it's a fun little figure. He moves really well and he just looks monstrous for such a tiny little guy and it really works for me. The other half of the two figures I wasn't really too interested in is our Gwen, our ghost spider. And this is another one where honestly it's kind of a fun figure and when I got it out I do like the way this one looks. She, she still has all of kind of the normal Marvel Legends female problems when it comes to articulation but this is a really cool looking figure and I don't have a great deal of knowledge on what is really going on with this one but I think she looks cool. So we've got a head that uh, is kind of locked in place. I mean, it does move, moves up and down a little bit, and then you can rotate it, but it does have this hood, which does, of course, get in the way, especially on the back. Uh, it does get in the way, and then, of course, it's connected to this big kind of like tongue thing here, which doesn't really cause a problem, but at the same time, it's going to it's going to it's going to be a thing you have to deal with i suppose is a way to say it arms go out at the shoulders you know all the way up they do rotate all the way around you've got your single rotating elbow and then we've got uh, hinge and rotation at the wrist we've got a diaphragm cut up here so she goes all the way around and then you've got legs that go out about that far they are definitely uh, not the most nimble they kick forward and you have to twist them to really get them all the way out and then they kick backwards a little bit you've got your thigh cut we got our double jointed knees, of course, and then she's got a shin swivel, and then you've got rocker, and you've got hinges down at those ankles. I do find that I have some issues with the detents in her ankles from time to time to find that sort of sweet spot that'll get her to stand up straight-ish, but otherwise, she moves about as well as you would expect her to move for a female Marvel Legends. The only thing you really have to worry about is just, is just this. I mean, it's a big part of her design, so... I'm not sure what they could have really done to make it any better. She does have the hood that sits around her neck, which does make it difficult to go backwards a little bit. But in a other, you know, any other way, she moves just fine. This thing is just something you have to really just deal with. It doesn't exactly get in the way. It's just something you have to uh, take into consideration when you're trying to pose her. Visually, though, I am 100% on board with really whatever is happening to this character, honestly. I think she looks really cool. It does present some challenges in terms of articulation, but the hood, mouth, tongue thing, it really works for me. I think it's really symbiote if that makes any sense. It very much seems like something that would happen during a transformation, and I just like the idea that this is kind of like a big mouth. It's kind of like a gaping maw, almost, and it does look really cool. So she's got a little jacket on her here, which has kind of like the spider stripes that run around to the actual logo on her back, which I think is really well done. Uh, I think this is a really cool looking spider logo. It's very clean and crisp, no issues on that. You've got some of that, it's not textured really uh, as much as the other figures are, but you've got some of that symbiote texture that's coming on her wrist with these spikes that stick out. And then you've got mostly just sort of a, a basic bare uh, chest as far as paint goes, because it's really nothing there, that leads down to the legs and you've got her little uh, kind of slipper shoes that have more of that kind of symbiote texture done up in that, the kind of teal green that she has. And she looks pretty good. I mean, as far as visuals go for the body itself, I think it's really nice. Uh, it's it's pretty minimal, but at the same time, she's pretty unique. Where, where it really all comes together, though, is this head and the hood combination. So the head is really just your normal kind of female-looking uh, spider character. So you've got just a blackish blue void in there with those pink and white lenses, but you've got this massive, massive hood that's wrapped around her head, and it's sort of like engulfing her as if it were a big, big head or a mouth almost. And you've got her, her pink and white. Uh, color scheme going on there that leads to this kind of gnarly tongue, which I think is really cool. I mean, it's not bendy wire or anything like that, but it's very flexible and it does allow you to like wrap it around her if you wanted to, you know, do something like that. It's got kind of like a little grip here at the end so you can rip and you can, you know, put it around like another character's neck or a, uh, a hand or something like that so she can use it as a weapon in some fashion. So I think it's a really cool idea. It's, it's definitely something you have to deal with when it comes to posing her or just sort of playing around with her, but it's undeniably a very eye-catching aspect of this figure. It's very unique. It's very different. I think they did a pretty good job of it. Uh, the only real uh, real negative that, I, that you have to really take into consideration is that it's always going to be there. So, you know, it's not something that you can really, really um, take on or off without changing up the entire look of the figure, because this is definitely the big selling point. You could, of course, take it off if you pop the head off, but then it's not really going to be as impactful.
Another symbiote crossed off the list with Phage here. This is one of my most anticipated figures for this wave for sure, just to be able to get another one of these. Uh, I think they did a pretty solid job here as well, with a lot of existing parts reusage, but he does come with a really cool accessory, and I like the little addition they gave him on the back. So there's a lot of familiar stuff going on here when it comes to articulation. No surprises, really. Uh, head can look up, he can look down. You've got not much, if any, tilt, really, and then you've got full rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate all the way around. You've got your bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, of course. And then we've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. Nothing new, nothing crazy there. We've got our ab crunch. It goes backwards, forwards, and then rotates. Legs go out about yay far. They kick forward all the way. Backwards a little bit, and you do have your thigh cut, double jointed knees. And then we've got our shin swivel. Mine have been sticking on this guy, but no real issues there. We've got rocker and hinges down at those ankles. So this guy is very, very standard, par for the course when it comes to Marvel Legends. Uh, he is he is among the more basic figures when it comes to moving them around, but I think ultimately it all comes down to the visuals on this figure because that's really where my interests lie, just to be able to get another one of these, you know, bigger named symbiotes. And this guy is high up on my list just because I really like the way he looks, and I think he's a really unique look when it comes to, uh, like, the blades that are on his arms and on his legs. His color scheme, I think, works really well here. So you've got kind of a it's not exactly yellow, it's not exactly gold, it's sort of somewhere in between a mixture of the two, and it works really, really well in conjunction with all the symbiote uh, kind of paint that's on him. So this isn't sculpt, it's not like Carnage, so he is uh, he is fully painted when it comes to how his symbiote is sort of crawling all over his body. So you've got it down here on the shins, on the torso, a little bit on the back, and then on the arms and the shoulders. You do have this little add-on piece here, uh, which you could take off if you want, but I certainly never will because I really like it. I think it looks cool. It gives him a little bit more bulk and definition around just the overall shoulder area. My, my favorite aspect for the overall look of this guy, though, is the head and specifically his eyes, though, because, of course, those eyes take up, like, 60% of the entire head sculpt. I think they look fantastic in conjunction with the black outline against that kind of yellow-gold look. And then he has a crazy, crazy mouth. So his mouth is just fully open. You've got the sinewy kind of gum line that's in there with those gnashing teeth. So he does look really cool. I mean, I think they did a pretty solid job with this figure overall. Nothing too crazy when it comes to the overall construction or paintwork, but he has a really unique look that I think they did a really solid job of translating into plastic, having these blades on his arms in conjunction with the more kind of monstrous style hands work really well. It makes him look a little bit more menacing. And then, of course, he does come with an accessory that you can change him up, which I think is probably my favorite aspect of the figure in general. Uh, and you've got this humongous, humongous blade arm. Uh, you can put it on either arm here, so it's just a replacement for the hand, and it sits over top of his arm. It sits over top of the blade that's over here. So you've got the gold paint with the symbiote kind of making this uh, massive, massive uh, scythe blade almost. I think it looks fantastic. It's really big. Uh, it adds a little bit more of a monstrous, imposing presence for him. So this is really cool. And again, it's probably my favorite thing overall when it comes to the figure. Uh, in conjunction with this head sculpt, I think it makes him look just really unique and really nasty. So I will likely always be displaying him with this. I think it's a really cool idea, and I would love to see more stuff like this implemented with uh, other legends. You know, just like that Carnage axe hand that we got a while back, it would be really cool to see more stuff like this for a lot of the other symbiote characters as well. Now we've got one of my most anticipated figures for this wave, and uh, I mean, at this point I've got three of these guys because he was the army, army builder that I never knew was going to be an army builder. And then, of course, you know, D Amazing started posting, and Jay Hernandez started posting, and I did a little research and found out that this guy is absolute carnage and is supposed to be very much something that you can army build very easily if you're familiar with the comics. So I went back and did my research and read that miniseries to know what in the world is going on here, and I don't need a million of these, but I do think that they are very cool from an army builder perspective and this is a really really nice figure uh, it is uh, some new it's a lot of new stuff really uh, and they really went all out with this design i'm curious what we're going to see with this body down the road because you know they're going to reuse it so we've got a head that can look all the way up he can look all the way down you've got a little bit of tilt full rotation arms go out at the shoulders they, of course, rotate. You do have to watch out for the symbiote piece on his back. I mean, it's going to get in the way, but it doesn't really stop anything. You do have your butterfly joint. We've got bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. You've got a crunch that goes backwards, forwards all the way, and then you've got full rotation at the waist. Legs go out really far on this guy. They kick forward all the way, backwards a good bit. You've got your thigh cut, double jointed knees, 
and then we've got our shin swivel rocker and hinges down at those ankles. So this guy moves really, really well. I have had no problems posing him into some honestly quite dynamic positions. I've had a lot of fun moving this guy around, well, moving all of them around, putting them into weird, goofy, uh, kind of monstrous positions. So this guy is just poised to be a very dynamic presence on your shelf, and I think they did a great job uh, with the overall construction on this figure. And that, of course, leads into the aesthetics on this guy because, I mean, really, that's where they knocked it out of the park, I think, because this guy looks fantastic. He looks exactly like the uh, various carnages that are in the comic book. So I think they did a really good job here. Uh, as far as the overall figure goes, I mean, this guy is unique because everything you see here that's black is sculpted. And even beyond that, there is like musculature striations sculpted into the underlying red plastic. So he is uh, very, very different. This is definitely a far cry from the previous carnage that we got. So this is a very different figure when it comes to overall construction and just how he moves and how he looks. I think this is, uh, I mean, by far this is probably the definitive carnage right now because it's, it's, it moves really well, but it also looks fantastic. So you've got, you know, the symbiote kind of crawling all over his body here. I mean, literally every inch of this figure is covered in detail like this. We do have this removable piece here. If you don't want to have this, you can take it off. You've got more sculpting underneath there on those traps, but this gives him, uh, you know, a little bit more presence. It bulks him up a little bit on the back and then you've got all this business sort of sticking out of him. You've got more of it over here on the wrist and on the tricep. It's coming out of his shins, the whole deal. And then he's got the uh, kind of monstrous clawed hands as well, which I'm a big fan of because that's, uh, that's a very carnage thing. But the big thing that really stuck out at me when it came to this figure is the head sculpt because that's where I wasn't familiar with this guy. I don't know why he looked like this, but this is a very, very specific look for carnage. And I really like it. I really dig uh, the logo, the emblem there on the forehead. Everything is really clean and crisp. The fade from black to red on the side here is pretty well done. And just the overall look, I mean, he looks freaking maniacal. He very much looks as crazy as he should be. So I really think they did a fantastic job with the overall sculpt, paint applications, the whole nine yards on this figure. I'm a big fan of just about everything that's going on here. I mean, like I said, I've got three of them already and I have had a, I've had a hard time not putting this figure into other reviews before getting to this review uh, because it's a lot of fun. It definitely makes for an interesting army builder and it looks fantastic. I am very, very curious to see see what they do with all these parts down the road because again this is all new unique stuff and it, and it works so so well here and then as far as accessories for Carnage goes, he has one. So not a lot, not a lot of figures in this way come with accessories, but he does have one, and we get an extra head sculpt for this guy. And initially I thought that this was just a reuse of the head that we got a while back, but it's definitely not. So this is an entirely new alternate head sculpt, uh, different expression, different paint applications, and then he does have the symbiote texture sculpted on top of this head as well to match the body. So it is uh, another head to utilize, and you could, you could use the other head if you wanted to pop it on as well from those previous figures. But I think this one looks really good. It's a more... It's a more classic looking Carnage figure or st style of head, so I do like that. So if you want to maybe army build them up, you can have one that has kind of this head, and then the rest have that more absolute style of Carnage head sculpt. And then rounding out the wave of normal figures before we get to the bath, we've got, I guess, probably the, the least exciting figure in this way for me personally, because... Morbius Wild is something that I'm a fan of, and I like this look for him. You know, this kind of 90s vibe that we've got here. He is very much a uh, odd figure out. Everything in this wave is so symbiote specific, and then we get this. So it's like they figured out a way to get him in the line, but he at the same time almost sort of doesn't fit. I'm glad to get him though, but I think he, is, he does seem a little bit out of place here. So uh, let's see what he can do. See how he moves around. You got a head that can look up all the way. He looks down all the way as well. A uh, little bit of tilt, full rotation at the head, and then you've got arms that go out. They rotate all the way around. You do have your bicep swivel. We've, of course, got double jointed elbows. And then you've got hinges and rotation at those wrists. Pretty normal stuff there, really. You've got an ab crunch that goes forward and backward, but not too much. And then you've got your waist twist. We've got legs that go out about yay far. They kick forward. They kick backwards just slightly. And then you've got your thigh cut. We've got double jointed knees, but they only go back about that far. And then we've got our, well, we've got a self-falling cape. We've got our shin swivel and then you've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. Mine have been kind of stuck-ish, but they do move uh, pretty good. Range is nice on him. So overall he is, I don't know, fairly standard when it comes to a Marvel Legends figure. There's really nothing, nothing new or unique here, but he is a little bit uh, impeded in some areas, specifically at the ab crunch and then at those hips. 
Now, I do think he still looks good visually. Despite the fact that he is the odd figure out here, I still think he looks okay. Uh, this is a Spider-Man wave, after all. I mean, really, it's more of a Venom symbiote wave, so that's where I kind of think he falls a little bit short, because he still just seems out of place. But he does look pretty good, and again, I do like this particular look. I mean, I can remember this look from the comics, uh, and it's pretty good. There is just nothing too crazy about it. It's it's pretty basic. So he's in kind of like the uh like the S M gear almost. But the the sculpt work here is pretty good. The zipper's nicely painted, all the rivets, the uh the belt area is pretty well done as well. Sculpt on it's nice. I do like the the monster style hands. But he is again kind of basic. You've got this rubbery cape here, which while it looks good, I mean you saw it, it fell out while while I was moving him and that's been a theme for me with this guy is that he will uh have the cape eject itself from time to time. The tatters do look nice, the holes it very much fits the theme, the the overall look here. And it's very it's very era specific. So like I don't have that older Morbius because I didn't want that one. I'm not sure that I was really clamoring for this one, but at the same time having it in hand makes me a little bit nostalgic for for those uh, those era of comic books. So it's a pretty specific look and one I am familiar with. Uh, so again, it looks good, but kind of is what it is. It's just kind of basic. And then the head sculpt up here, I think is for the most part pretty well done. He does kind of look a little odd at times, but overall I think the hair looks really nice, the kind of windswept back look. There is kind of like a smokiness around his eyes, and then that deep, deep red really clashes with the super pale uh, white face that we've got here with that open mouth. So again, it, it's another very specific look for Morbius, but I do think that they accomplished what they were going for here. He again is maybe just the least exciting when it comes to this wave. And then rounding out this wave, we've got the Build-A-Figure Venom Pool. And this guy is something that, honestly, I'm not familiar with. I didn't even know it existed until this wave was announced. But it was undeniably cool, and it translates into figure form pretty well. This thing is humongous, too. I don't know if it's really the biggest Build-A-Figure that we've gotten recently, but it is definitely up there. It's, it's not the tallest, but it's certainly one of the bulkiest. Uh, it's very much kind of like a strong guy bath, almost, except he's even bulkier on the on the leg side than, uh, than Guido is. He's got a huge amount of bulk, uh, though. There's just a ton of stuff going on here, and of course this guy is 100% unique. Uh, everything is just incredibly well sculpted. This is a really, really cool looking figure. And he does move pretty well, too. He's, he's still a build a figure, so he's got a few limitations here and there, but for the most part, pretty good. So the head can look all the way up, and he can look all the way down. It is one of those heads where he's kind of jutting forward, so he doesn't really twist all that well. He basically just sort of angles from side to side, but it works pretty nicely. You can rotate it, but of course it does that, which is not what you want. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate all the way around, of course. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got a single jointed elbow, but it's pretty good. I mean, full 90 degrees, deep cut on that. And then you've got uh, vertical hinges on this set of hands and then rotation. As far as the torso goes, you've got a crunch. So he goes forward and then he goes backwards a little bit. You do have a waist twist there, hidden by the belt pretty well. And then you've got your legs that go out about that far. They definitely do suffer a little bit because of the size on this guy. And then they kick forward, but they kick forward all the way. You've got a little bit on the back. You've got your thigh cut. We've of course got double jointed knees and we can knock this, the swords off as well. We've got double jointed knees. They're kind of ratcheted, so they help with stability. And then you've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. The hinges are pretty good going back. They kick these uh, these manacles when you kick forward though, so you do have to worry about that. Otherwise though, he is pretty well articulated. No real issues to speak of here. Uh, he's very sturdy. He, he definitely is a stable figure because of how big and heavy he is, but I'm really surprised at how well he moves and you can get him into some really nice poses without much fuss. Like with a lot of build of figures at least for me though, a lot of this comes down to the looks and just his his shelf presence because Again, this figure is really, really large, and we're going to do some size comparisons with a few other figures in this wave, and then some some others that aren't in this wave, just to give you an idea of what things look like. But he's a really big figure. Uh, he's very tall, but he's also, and more importantly, really, really beefy. I mean, this thing is is huge, just in a in a girth and a width perspective. There is a lot of plastic here. And again, I'm not really familiar with with what's really going on here, and that doesn't matter to me. It's Deadpool and it's Venom combined, and it definitely works. So this is like a hulked out Venom that is, uh, or a Hulk out Deadpool that's wearing, uh, you know, the Venom symbiote, and then it sort of just kind of coalesces into him looking like Deadpool while having a lot of Venom features, specifically the head sculpt, specifically the tongue, but th it's a really cool looking figure. I mean, it's very much a big, monstrous uh, build a figure, and I really like it. The sculpt is fantastic, too. I really can't stress that enough because that's where a lot of the selling factor on this one comes in. The suit 
is fully textured. So anything that's red has a, a kind of canvas pattern to it. Even the head sculpt, all of it, it's all textured. So it catches the light really well. You've got like these uh, almost like staples that are keeping things together on him right here. Like it's been clipped back together as he sort of like ripped his clothes apart, transforming. You've got the, the scabbard back here for the swords, uh, which you saw them fall off while I was moving them around. And this is my, this is probably the one area of the figure that I'm really not a fan of. This thing clips onto the straps, but it just sort of hangs there. It doesn't peg in or anything like that, which is nice from an aesthetic perspective. But as far as using it, you're probably going to knock it off every now and again. It's not a big deal, but it's something to talk about. The, uh, the actual straps here are really well done, though. They do move with the figure. They've got a little bit of breathing room there. So when you crunch them forward and backward, they do flow with him and not in a way that really restricts him or anything. And then you can just cinch it back down and it's going to cover the seam line at his waist pretty nicely. Painted pretty well. The, uh, the connectors, the fastener, the belt buckle, all painted really nicely. And then he's got like these uh, manacles on the wrists and he's got them on the feet. Again, I don't really know what's going on there, but it's a cool little detail for the figure. So a chain link on each one. They're not painted or anything, but they do have that kind of marbly metallic plastic. It's just a really cool looking figure though. And again, it comes down a lot to how big he is, uh, shelf presence, the overall size, and just the tremendous level of detail that's been crammed into this figure. Uh, I think he's, he's easily one of the more impressive build of figures uh, as far as sculpt goes in a very long time. A lot of that for me comes in at the head sculpt, that tongue, the kind of purple black tongue, really well done with those teeth all individually painted. And again, all of that little texture detail up there that really kind of just makes him a little bit more lifelike, if that makes any, any sense. Obviously it's not meant to be, but it, it does have a little bit more of a real world look to it than being like a flat mask from a comic book. And I really, really dig just everything about this figure from an aesthetic perspective. I think they truly knocked this one out of the park. This is, this is the kind of build a figure that you might buy a wave for even if you aren't, like me, invested in this particular character. And then as far as accessories goes, our Build-A-Figure does actually have a few, which isn't all that common with Build-A-Figures, but he needs a few. So we've got some swords. These are pretty standard, so they're just uh, black and silver with a little pitting on them, so there is a little sculpted detail in there just to make them look a little bit worn. I do find that he has a little bit of a difficult time uh, using these like the, the hands are incredibly incredibly tight as far as the grip goes so it's not like they're going to fall out you're not going to lose them or anything but at the same time they're a little bit difficult for me still to put in and to take out not the hugest problem it certainly could be far worse in the other direction but it's it's worth mentioning so he's got two swords a very deadpool thing and then he does have a set of extra hands as well so we've got uh, gripping hands on him in the box and then or well normally. And then you've got these extra hands as far as uh, kind of monstrous clawed hands. Again, just like the rest of the suit, anything that's red has that texture on it. And you can sort of see it uh, pick up the light. So you've got a couple different options when it comes to hands, very much just like the other symbiote type of characters in this wave. He does have these kind of clawed monster hands. And then you've got a very Deadpool accessory in those swords. So not a ton of stuff, but it's always nice to get accessories with a bath. Now, I wanted to do some size comparisons for this wave, and I'm not going to do every figure compared to each other because, you know, most of these figures in the in the wave are relatively normal size Marvel Legends. These guys are the outliers, and they are the ones that people want to know sizing on. So here they are next to uh, the Beskar Mando. So you can see that they absolutely tower over our Mandalorian. And then here they are with another large figure, so Rocksteady from NECA. And you can see that, I mean... Just in every aspect, these two figures are incredibly large. Obviously, the builder figure should be quite big, but Venom is humongous in his own right. So these guys have a lot of size. And then here they are with uh, the Fox Wolverine. Let's do something, something else, something maybe a little bit on the smaller side. Uh, the Lightning Collection Zeo Red Ranger there. So you can see they've just got a lot of shelf presence, a lot of bulk, a lot of size in general. Uh, let's do, what about a G.I. Joe figure? Let's do Cobra Commander. Just gave me an idea of what they look like next to next to him. And you can see, I mean, they, they just tower over everything. So these two are very much in a class of their own. The Build-A-Figure is incredibly bulky compared to most Build-A-Figures, and Venom is humongous in just about every way for a regular figure. They really went all out to sell just how big this figure and character should be. And then here is our full wave lineup. So I figure I'll do something I don't think I've done in a little while and kind of do a ranking for, for my favorites uh, in the wave. And we'll go from least favorite to most favorite. Bottom of the list is definitely going to be Morbius for me. A lot of it is because I don't really feel like he fits all that well in this wave. He definitely is Spider-Man themed, but at the same time, look at the rest of this wave and he doesn't really work. He kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Next up, we've got Ghost Spider 
followed by Miles. And those two are just because they aren't anything I really care too much about, although they are a lot more fun than I expected them to be. Then we've got Phage and followed up by Carnage. Then we've got the Build-A-Figure and the number one for me is Venom uh, by a long shot, really, just because it's so much fun. It's an awesome figure. It's humongous. It's got such a shelf presence and it has just such a great range of articulation. The Build-A-Figure is beefy and massive and for something that I honestly didn't even know existed until this wave got announced, I really have a lot of fun with it. Carnage and Phage are both exceptionally well done figures. I'm really happy to finally have Phage uh, in the line. And then this version of Carnage is really cool and like I said, makes for a really solid army builder if you want to go down that road. But overall, this wave is pretty solid. I had a lot of fun with just about every figure here. Uh, I do think that we've got some really heavy hitter figures when it comes to this Carnage, when it comes to this particular Venom. They've made new parts for, for Miles and for Ghost Spider and that weapon for Phage is just so awesome. The Build-A-Figure is wild and humongous and just, I mean, it's crazy. It's Venom, it's Deadpool, it's its a lot of things that a lot of people like crammed into one massive, well-sculpted, well-articulated figure. And while I, again, think he doesn't necessarily fit the bill when it comes to the theme for this wave, Morbius is still a pretty solid figure if you're into this version of Morbius. And, and I like this version. Again, I just think he would fit better in maybe a more Spider-Man-themed wave rather than one that is so very much symbiote Venom-related. Otherwise, though, this is a really solid wave, uh, probably one of my favorites for the entire year. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Venom Venom Pool Bath wave. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.